Hello and welcome to this training video and if you're a losing retracement trader, breakout trader or level trader then you absolutely need to watch this video all the way till the end because I'm going to show you that you've been tricked and that if you don't change direction and learn to look at the markets in a different way you're always going to lose and essentially you're just going to lose everything that you put into this in terms of your trading account and all the time etc and heartache that goes along with it. So I'm going to show you why you've been tricked and how you can turn the tables so you can trade alongside the big banks and institutions because at the moment what's happening is you're being essentially used so that they can transact e efficiently off the back of your off the back of your money and you know how many times have you ever taken a trade you've got the direction right but ultimately you get stopped out and it goes without you unfortunately on board and that's what we're going to show you today and I'm also going to show you a trading setup that you can use in this video so that you can essentially uh, make hundreds of pips with this trading strategy on a monthly basis so let's dive in so it's important to understand how how a bank works when they are transacting let's just say they want to transact at the number 100 right and they've got a big order to fill so let's say that order is 30 billion dollars okay now then if they, if they find this level, so let's just say um, they want to do business at a level of, uh, of uh, support as an example. You can say at price 100, but the problem is there's no sellers there because the, the, the actual uh, level itself is very obvious. It's been touched several times. And as you know, if a level's been touched several times, the idea out there, the narrative that's out there in the trading uh, community is that the stronger the level gets. Unfortunately, that's not, that's not true. It, what it does do, though, is it makes it very obvious. So it makes your moves very obvious, and that's a bad thing. So the bank wants to buy at, at 100 just like everybody else, but that's a problem for them because they're trading in such large quantities that if there's not enough sellers at that level, then essentially they're not going to be able to do business because imagine they, they, they start trading and they get maybe say 5 billion uh, done at the level what's going to happen is price is going to start accelerating away from that level without them being able to get the rest of you know 25 billion remaining the rest of that order finished off and obviously if they then start piling in again and let's say you know 10 billion you know price is just going to explode and it's going away all the time from that hundred price and that's called slippage and they can't have that so what's happening is um, to you is that you're being used because the bank can't allow this situation to occur you're being manipulated you're being tricked you're being told to trade breakouts retracements and levels but the problem is what you're actually doing is you're providing liquidity for the, the big banks and institutions. Let me quickly explain. So we've got this level. It's a well-defined level of support. And as I said, it's been touched several times. It's coming back in for the third touch. One, two, three. Sorry, fourth touch. So it's even better. <laughs> it's, uh, it's been hit even more times. And the question is, if you were looking at this level and you wanted to go long here, believing that this was a good place to buy, where would you place your stop loss? Okay, just think about that. Where would you place your stop loss? And the chances are, what you will do is you will place your stop very close below that level, maybe five, ten pips, something like that. And what happens is there's a clustering of those orders in and around that structure and there's several reasons for it people are trying to uh, essentially manage risk people don't like to have stop losses miles away uh, because they, they, do, they don't want to take that much risk on board and even though it's really a, a, a risk is all about percentage of, of, of account that you're willing to uh, take on a trade you know people just tend to cluster around these structures being proven many times that people hide behind these structures and the other some of the other reasons one of them in particular is that you get taught to do that. And this is part of the problem. You've been taught to do completely the wrong thing. So you place your stop clustering below that level and then you go along and you buy hoping that the price will follow through. But the problem with that is that everyone's trying to do that. The banks are trying to do that. So what, what will happen is that price will be manipulated and instead of it going up, but momentarily it will, and I'll, I'll explain that in a second, it'll then go down through the, through the stops and then ultimately back up and then it can break out to new highs, right? 
unfortunately without you on board right you you weren't wrong it's just that your moves are too predictable and that's why if you're a losing trader trading any of those three primary uh, core disciplines then unfortunately uh, you, this is always going to happen for you so just going back to this scenario we need to understand why traders are taking those trades in the first place and again it's it's based off of the, the move being very, very, uh, very obvious, the setup being obvious. Now, while there are unlimited amounts of strategies, there's really only these three primary key disciplines, as I mentioned, the breakouts, levels, and, uh, and retracements. And, and that encapsulates pretty much every trader if you think about it. So what that makes it very easy for people to do is understand where you're taking your trades. So if we can understand where you're taking your trades, then the big banks can too. So, if you just think through the steps of taking a trade, you look at a level and you're basing it off that historical analysis. Okay, it's been touched once, twice, three times, four times. It's a great level. It's, it's obviously nice and strong. I'm going to go in here and take this trade. Once you've made that decision based off that historical analysis, you're then going to focus your attention at the hard right edge. And what is the hard right edge? It's just where price is in the here and now. And you're not taking the trade yet, but you're poised to take the trade. What you want to see next is some type of reaction off the level that is ultimately proving to you that what you think is a, a going to occur there is actually trying to play out. So the, the price comes into the level, you're poised, and you get a big engulfing candle at the level, say. Or a couple of candles that are positive that you, you know, just make it even more convincing that this is going to go higher. So at that point, this is where you're going to enter because you're not focusing, the, the, the interesting part about the hard right edge is that people just focus there, well, and I call this entry cheese, it's the price action that tempts you in off the sidelines to actually take some risk, like a mouse being tempted in, right, by a block of cheese on a, on a mouse trap. It's the same process, you're just the mouse in this situation, you're being tempted in by a little bit of positive price action where you believe that you should get some positive price action if, you, if your analysis is correct. And then you're not paying any attention to the hard right edge. The, the fact that we all have it, this big uh, empty space to the right of all our charts, but very few traders, especially in the retail space, are paying attention to it. So what happens is you focus on, on here, price reacts, and then boom, you go in. Now, this is the most important part after that process is where do you place uh, where do you place your stops and as i said you get a cluster in in and around these structures proven to be uh, the case you will get some further away a little bit more sporadic in number traders are trying to manage risk and they're trying to enter and pick off a really clean tight entry so that the, the place of stops there now then this is where the problems start because as you're in now, you've took some risk, right? You've, you've, you've essentially, you know, that money in your account was never at risk until you entered. Now it's in the game. So now you're fair game for the banks and institutions. And those stop loss orders are, are, are clustered and accumulated below that, below that structure in this case of this level of support. Now, what is that for the bank? What does that provide them with? It provides them with a very obvious uh, area on the chart where there's a huge amount of sell orders just sitting there. Because whatever transaction you take, if you're a buyer, it's always the opposite transaction to exit that position. So whether or not you exit on a trailing stop, whether or not you exit manually, whether or not you get stopped out uh, automatically, it's always the opposite. So if you buy, you must sell to exit. If you sell, you must buy to exit. So what this is, what this does is when price goes down through that level, the bank who have that massive order to fill can now transact in this environment, this zone, this sweet spot, where there's this huge amount of liquidity that allows them to do the buying in the face of that selling, that forced selling. It's forced because people don't want to get stopped out, but they're being forced out of those positions by virtue of the fact price is going down into those stop losses. Not only that, when that occurs, Breakout traders get interested in that uh, particular situation too, right? Because what does a breakout trader do when price drops down through an, a very well-developed uh, and obvious 
level of support and resistance support in this case they'll they'll want to enter too but, but this is now willing selling right so you have the forced selling from the stop losses being triggered now you've got the breakout traders piling in and lo and behold what tends to happen when you've got a, a nice uh, well-defined structure when price pulls back retracement traders will look to go short off that level net net more selling so the bank is, a, is a manipulating this entire area and it's, it's triggering and inducing and seducing in more sellers into the game so that they can then start buying in the face, the bank, right? They can start buying in the face of all of that selling. And, and what ultimately occurs is price goes back up into the level everybody gets stopped out or dragged into trades that didn't want to take and they get stopped out on the other side so these sellers are going to get stopped out as price goes up through the level these buyers got stopped out as price dropped down through the level originally and the bank got to do its business efficiently without any need to worry about slippage the costly uh, the costly expense of slippage it didn't occur it's not that you weren't right in your uh, in, in initial analysis it's just that your moves are too obvious. And this is why you have to do something different. You have to change course. If you continue trading the way that you're trading, all you're going to ever be is liquidity for the big banks and institutions. So if price gets into this, uh, back into this level and it closes back inside, you want to place your stop on the other side of the manipulation itself, however big that is, and place your stop five, 10 pips on the other side of that. And then you want to go for at least 100, 200 pips in profit um, to, the, to the upside in this case, because you, you know you've just done business with a big institution up your back. You've just traded the way that they trade. And that's why, uh, that's why you've got to change course. And uh, I, hope you've, uh, I hope you've found this training very helpful.